Uh, my name is Henry O'Donnell. Um, over the past uh, month or two, I've been volunteering with Red Hook ESL, which is a small student-led uh, organization that tutors um, individuals that would like to get better at uh, speaking English. ESL stands for English Second Language. Um, we meet twice a week, but volunteers can come once or twice a week if they want. Um, and I found that um, this little organization provides a um, safe haven for people um, and kind of creates an environment that is conducive to learning, um, which by, na by its nature um, creates sanctuary. Uh, and so it's my great pleasure to introduce Karen and Megan, uh, the two student leaders of Red Hook ESL. Karen Rosland. Uh, I'm a senior at Bard. I'm a literature major and I'm a co-head yeah. of Red Hook ESL. <laughs> I'm Megan. I'm a political studies major and I'm also a senior and a co-head this semester. Yeah. Um, so just to start off, I just wanted to hand out a few things um, that have to do with uh, Red Hook ESL. Um, these are a few pictures uh, from when the program first started. Um, these are two uh, TLS brochures. Um, I believe on the 2015 version, on page 22 and 23, you can see a description and a quote from Red Hook ESL. And then on the 2002 version, uh, you can see the first ever published uh, description of Red Hook ESL. Um, and then this is a summary of uh, the <coughs> senior project of the girl who originally started Red Hook ESL. It's actually really amazing, so look through this one. Um, so yeah, do you just... Sure, yeah, to... maybe you guys could just talk about what you do. Um... Yeah, um, so I just want to start off with some background about the program. Um, so uh, in the spring of 2002 at Bard, there was a course called uh, Hispanic Presence in the United States, taught by Professor Melanie uh, Nicholson. Um, this course was designed to provide in-depth uh, like study of the historical, social, political, and linguistical, uh, linguistic issues surrounding the Hispanic presence in the US. In the first four weeks of the program, uh, students were uh, devoted to instruction in ESL pedagogy. And then after these four weeks, BARD students went on to be matched with Spanish speakers in the community and to uh, provide English conversation tutoring to these uh, Spanish speakers. Um, this class gave students the opportunity to get to know members of the Hispanic community and ultimately inspired a student named Kate Grimm Feinberg to begin the Red Hook ESL Center. Um, she formed the Red Hook ESL Center in uh, the fall of 2002, and many of the students who had been in the class with her had uh, joined in to help with the tutoring. Um, the program started off with five uh, students coming, and it eventually managed somehow to rise to 25, which was really impressive. Um, so what we do, specifically is uh, we offer drop-in tutoring hours to anyone in the local community who is looking to improve their English. These classes take place Mondays and Thursdays from 7.30 to 9 p.m. And we encourage uh, parents to bring their children if need be. Um, and we specifically uh, advertise towards, I guess, people more 18 and above. Um, we emphasize commitment to our tutors um, so that we can make sure that uh, our two tutors are working with the same person every week. And we also emphasize casual conversation so you can get to know each other um, in a more informal manner. Um, I began uh, tutoring at Red Hook ESL in the spring of my sophomore year. Um, I just started working at the Learning Commons uh, as an ESL writing tutor, and I met a girl named Kaylee 
uh, and she was the head of Red Hook ESL at the time. Um, Kaylee invited me to come to Red Hook ESL, and so I did, and I sat with her as she tutored somebody, and she was honestly such an amazing person. She's now gone on to um, do uh, teaching in Nicaragua, <laughs> um, and one key thing about Red Hook ESL that stands out in my memory is the last day of Red Hook ESL uh, that year, when Kaylee was going to graduate, many people came and it was just informal and they all went around and talked about why they were so thankful for Red Hook ESL and it was really inspiring. Um, and yeah, that's kind of why I've continued to do it. Um, in my fall of my junior year, I went abroad and then I came back and continued to do Red Hook ESL. Um, in that spring, last spring, I was asked uh, if I would be a leader this fall, and I agreed, and then I brought Megan on board. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about Sure, what? yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I actually, I, I started out working for Lavos at Bard, um, and it was just like a really great experience, and um, I don't know, I've been like learning Spanish since I was really little, and I went to like a an immersion school. Um, so Spanish has just kind of always been part of my life. And um, then I had an internship at the Worker Justice Center this summer. Um, and it was just really, really great to be able to like use my knowledge of Spanish to be able to like communicate with um, individuals who I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to help them or like do the job that I was doing without that. With that. Um, language connection, and so um, I knew I wouldn't be able to keep that up in the fall while I was trying to study at Bard. So um, I went onto the TLS like web page, and I remember I had seen something about like Red Hook ESL. So I reached out to um, to Liz Boyd, who was the old um, leader, and then. She pointed me to Karen and was like, "Yeah, like Karen might might need some help, so I'm I sure she'd help. love to have you." <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to volunteer, but mm -hmm. Karen was like, "Yeah, you want to help me lead this?" Yeah. And like, yeah. I already, I, yeah, I just wanted to be here and help the project yeah. succeed. So, yeah. uh, last semester we saw a significant drop in the number of uh, two T's who came to the program, and now we have, although it's a low number, we have a more steady. Mm -hmm number of two T's that come and I feel like the project's in a really good place right now and it makes me really happy. Yeah. Um, in terms of what our resources are, uh, our resources have been built up through the years by the various uh, TLS leaders who have uh, taken over the project. Uh, we have two entire bookshelves worth of materials consisting of novels such as The Fantastic Mr. Fox, um, magazines such as The National Geographic, dictionaries in Korean, Japanese, Spanish, Chinese, side-by-side uh, -side English through guided conversation workbooks, and a multitude of binders filled with worksheets put together by previous TLS leaders. Um, we also provide pens, pencils, notebooks, uh, whiteboards, markers, uh, for tutors and two T's to use during the sessions. Um, they're really useful from advanced to beginner level English speakers. Um, in terms of training, um, when I first started coming to the program, um, there was no training provided. Uh, Megan and I have tried to change this. We had Denise Minnan, who's the uh, language program coordinator at the Learning Commons, uh, come in and um, try to, she gave an hour and a half long, uh, what is it, like, training session yeah. to our tutors. Um, she provided them with multiple worksheets on uh, what are problems that might arise while tutoring, how to handle those problems, and also just ideas of what exactly to do during a tutoring session. Um, and also, in terms of outreach, um, we've had to do a lot this semester. Yeah. <laughs> um, we tried with the um, posters, yeah. Um, but we, I don't, we're we're very concerned yeah. with the safety of our students, and in an effort to make uh, Red Hook ESL as safe a place as possible, we've been mainly producing our flyers in Spanish and uh, putting them in specific locations that we believe are mm -hmm. good, and um, such as like Cancun's, the laundromat, uh, yeah. two different food stores. 
Um, we've also uh, asked the Vos to uh, take some of our flyers. They've published them on our Facebook page, on their Facebook page. Yeah. And also, uh, we reached out to the Worker Justice Center in yeah. Kingston. And um, we also reached out this semester to Culture Connect, um, which is another TLS project. And um, we have had Megan with uh, two of our tutors go yeah. I think twice now to um, pass out flyers to the parents who are picking up their kids who are also doing like English second language programs after school. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, and there's there's been interest shown there, um, and also just word of mouth is a good way mm -hmm. to get out information about uh, yeah. our project. Um, so why do we consider <laughs> this a sanctuary? Um, well, one, it's physically located inside a church, so that's like a pretty good reason for why it's a sanctuary. Um, another reason is that we've done our best to make it as safe a place as possible. We're concerned when we advertise. Um, we make sure that our two T's feel comfortable. Um, we provide uh, students that can speak Spanish to our two T's, um, so that beginner level um, English speakers feel more comfortable when first coming to Red Hook ESL. Um, Megan, during her session, has done uh, like 30 minute like conversations yeah. at the beginning of yeah. um, Red Hook ESL. Yeah, we just get to know each other really well and yeah. um, like just build a certain level of trust with each other. They have our you know phone numbers. Like mm -hmm. we we make. We text them every week, being like, come yeah. to ESL, like, yeah. Um, so we just make as much as an effort to talk to them as possible. Um, yeah, so as for the future of our program, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that we want to do. Um, I definitely want to keep advertising. Um, I want to try to possibly keep the program going during the winter. Um, which, will, which will just be based on if we can find tutors uh, right. to help do that. Um, also through um, like having to do research for this presentation, I learned a lot about how the program used to be run and I would like to like try to get some of those old habits back because they seemed pretty productive, Field honestly. Trips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then also maybe just have like um, more informal nights with our uh, tutors, like have an informal dinner yeah. and like everything like that and just continue to keep getting to know them. Um, I think that we've definitely improved from where the project was um, last after last semester. Um, and I'm like interested in continuing to see it grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, I, uh, I'm going to ask you guys a couple questions and then we can open it up to the audience as well. Um, but great presentation. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that you have a really intimate relationship with um, your two T's and you also mentioned that uh, you've struggled with resources, right? And I was wondering um, kind of what you see as the advantages and the disadvantages of being a student-led organization? Um, are you more flexible? Um, how does that affect your relationship with your two Ts? Uh, things like that. Um, I'm also curious about your relationship with um, the space in which you um, offer these services or this, this free drop-in tutoring service. Um, how has that shaped the um, kind of club over time, I guess? Um. In terms of like student-led organization, um, I think Culture Connect really thrives because it's not just a student-led organization. Mm -hmm. um, I think being a student-led organization has its benefits and its setbacks. Um, our setbacks having been, we have to think by ourselves like every conceivable way to advertise. Yeah. Um, but I think for that we've become more creative in yeah. um, the ways in which we advertise. Um, I also think that it's um, it's kind of benef it's beneficial to be a student organization because I think it um, we very much advertise it like this is informal and we're just like 
here because we want to do this yeah. and like we're learning from you, you're learning from us mm -hmm. um, and I think being students ourselves really helps to establish that kind yeah. of relationship yeah. um, and also establishes like a kind of level of like trust of like no this isn't like a professional thing, it's yeah. everyone's learning yeah. from everyone. In the beginning of the semester we emphasized to our tutors because most of them I think except for me and one other one were new um, that they didn't need previous tutoring experience and they just had to be very interested in the program and helping out um, and we've encouraged them to talk to us if they are like oh I'm worried about this or worried about that um, so that's another great thing about it being a student-led organization it's easier to talk to each other um, yeah. what about the space uh, um, just how how is your relationship with the church um, been has, has there been any has that evolved in a good way? Um, do you see yourself moving anywhere? Uh, would that change the nature of, of the club if you did go somewhere else? I think we've been at the church location since 2002. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think we're pretty happy with it. <laughs> um, and also that like that amount of like consistency I think is very, very mm. important yeah. to the program. Mm -hmm. And they're also kind enough to let us keep our resources in the back yeah. of their church. Right. Um, so I think we'll probably, we probably won't move anytime in the foreseeable future, um, especially because we're seniors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's been a great space. Um, the, what is it, Reverend is very yeah. priest, very communicative. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a key to it and everything. It's great. Yeah, and we're very, I, we're really just like guests there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I don't know. That feels that feels important to mention too. It's not our space, um, but we, yeah, are just someone's kind enough to let us use it, and mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah, it's really really great of them. Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess one other question I had is uh, this lecture series is on sanctuary. Um, so I'm not sure how much you may or may not relate to this. But uh, do you see yourselves as subverting any kind of authority when you do this? Um, kind of in the political climate we're in right now, the simple act of um, giving, of sheltering someone is, is could be considered like political um, uh, defiance almost. So yeah. would you see yourselves as um, kind of like rebellious or, 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 I don't know, subverting authority, I guess? Um, Maybe inadvertently? <laughs> not really sure. Like I feel like what we're trying to, is just, we're not intentionally being like, yeah, who cares about authority? I think we're just trying to do what we think is best and trying to help out um, yeah. a certain mm -hmm. like group of individuals that, at this point in time, like needs that assistance yeah. and care. I, I mean, I had some like weird things happen that kind of make me feel almost like that. Like, I met, we mentioned we hang posters in the laundromat, um, and the other day, um, my my roommate was there. And the, there were some people in the laundromat, you know, like, why are these posters in Spanish? What do they say? And they were really mm -hmm. skeptical of this information, like it was some kind of... Like Secret they, club. Yeah, I mean, but, like, yeah, they couldn't understand the language, so they wanted to, they were starting to remove them, and my roommate was like, oh, no, don't worry, like, it's just, you know, it's just a community project, like, you know not a big deal mm -hmm. um, and so they left them back there and so yeah there are like some moments like that that make it feel almost like it is some kind of like yeah and I guess the way we do go about advertising in a very like cautious manner yeah, yeah. so we try yeah. not to have to <laughs> get to that place of like subversion wow. or you know but sometimes it can feel like that even though that's not what I think we're doing. We're yeah. Just, yeah, that's amazing. That to me just um, like uh, uh, exemplifies how important it is yeah. um, to do something like this. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I it's it's um, 
kind of like a form of community outreach, right? Um, For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and just and like just community inclusion. Mm -hmm. Like this is our community, and there yeah. are so yeah. many people that like will never come in contact mm -hmm. because of language barrier. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great way to build it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> any uh, any questions from the audience? What is the sorry? Oh, sorry. What is the breakdown age wise of your students? I mean, are most of students, students, or do you get the, we have a large group of agricultural migrants, or do you get any of those folks that come in? So this semester, our um, amount of people that come for tutoring um, is very limited. Right now, we have a consistency of about three tutees coming. Um, but we're very thankful for that, for those three, to be honest. Um, they are not migrant workers. We've tried to um, <clears throat> reach out to um, people who work on farms in the community, but that's been sort of difficult. Um, and they also have a restricted amount of free time. Uh, and that's another reason that contributes to that. Um, but the ages, um, any, what do you think? Like Around 30, 30 to yeah. Yeah. 25 to 35. Yeah, 40? 25 to 40? Yeah, maybe? yeah, around that, right yeah. now. Their parents, they have children, or? Uh, I don't think, I don't think the three students we have have kids. So. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I don't think any of them have kids. Mirror. I don't think I'm not even that. I think she, Oh, okay. Maybe. I'm pretty sure she Okay. Does. Could be. Yeah. So then, yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kids. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> It's like, I don't know, we, whenever we're, um, when we're like having conversations about our days and things, it's not, it's not always about like telling each other exactly who we are, our parents, our family breakdown or whatever. It's, it's often about like things we want to do or things that things we you both did that day, things, things we yeah. both can talk, yeah. yeah. Um, so knowing exactly who the other person is, isn't necessarily yeah. like a big part of yeah. the project. Yeah. In the past, there has been a lot of um, farm workers that come. Um, and I think it's maybe just coincidental that we happen to have a lot of adults. Mm -hmm. um, because I think at one point in time, there were some children also coming to the program. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I saw a hand up. Well, I think you answered my question if you only have three to teach, but I was going to ask if you're, you work entirely with Spanish speakers or if you have some volunteers who work with other languages or have they ever? Yes, um, in the past we used to get an actual, like a good amount of uh, Japanese and um, Korean speakers. Um, now it just happens that all of our students are Spanish. Um, but in the past, yeah, uh, right now, yeah. I'd just like to say also that um, three two Ts means that you are just that more uh, connected with your two Ts. Like mm -hmm. um, you see the same person every every week, and you really build a relationship with them over the course of the semester, which is um, something you might not get if you're uh, teaching a large class or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we really get to know each other pretty well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, was the, uh, what do you think is the cause of sort of the dwindling numbers? Would you say that it's like the political climate? Would you say it was the election? Um, I'm saying they're not. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, after, I wasn't here in the fall, uh, last fall, so I don't know how severe our drop off was because I didn't know who was coming in the beginning and who yeah. didn't come afterwards. Um, but the old leader told me that after the election there was a significant drop off of the amount of people that were coming. I definitely saw that in the spring when about every week zero to two people were coming. Um, so in a way <laughs> we've <laughs> improved on that. Um, yeah. 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 Why do you think it's not coming? Safety issues, 
a lot of yeah i mean we definitely don't like question into the like documentation status of our students um but for undocumented people in the united states it's ex it's extremely like um, high stakes um, to be caught somewhere or get um, be like yeah caught in some kind of conflict with authority um, so that's always a concern um, and that can definitely dissuade people from from leaving their homes from I mean I'm sure this is the class I'm sure you guys know all about this but um, yeah so that could be a factor, but yeah, it could also just be general, like, you know, community distrust that is kind of reflected by the political climate of the election. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? You spoke to the way in which you advertise in the character Yeah, we <coughs> aim to do that, and I think we accomplish it pretty well. Um, it's hard to it's hard to be able to communicate that to people who haven't experienced or been to that space for the first time. Um, but it is a church. We have the key to the church. We are the only ones in the space when we are there. If someone emails us in Spanish, Megan responds. In yeah, I can communicate with with people who have concerns or are going to be late or you know. Um, we try and bring snacks. We like, I mean, it's just, um, it is kind of like a home. We talk about our days, we laugh with each other, we, you know, um, we read together. And so it, it does feel like a, a like semi-private space. It definitely does not feel like a public space. Yeah. So in that use of the church, yeah. From what you say, I gather that you know your students Names, but they're never written down. It's my guess. Well, just in their notebooks that they mm -hmm. practice, <laughs> practice on. Yeah. 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 And yeah, when we are when we're communicating with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. We don't ask for like a sign-in sheet or right. anything like that. Mm -hmm. We can count how many come. <laughs> it's pretty easy. We're allowed to count. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck to Red Hook and Rhinebeck, I would say. Yeah, we're trying to. I, we're trying to stay as close to like this part of the side of the river, this part like close by Bard, because um, I think part of the challenge of this project is reaching, reaching people who do live nearby. Um, yeah, um, because while maybe we could expand our our pool of um, students, we could reach more students by you know widening are like advertising. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's the goal yeah. we're trying to achieve. It. Um, I think a lot of it is about getting to know people, our neighbors. Yeah. Um, Although I, I would say it speaks to what Megan was talking about, about creating trust and commitment. 
that one of uh, one of the students who's been coming year after year mm -hmm. uh, comes from uh, basically near Catskill yeah. um, every week, which is a really long drive. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's because uh, you know uh, that student maybe came once and and found a, a trusting home-like environment. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the goal, I, or from what little I know about Red Hook ESL, I, 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 it seems like the goal is trying to uh, make people feel like part of a, a community. Yeah. Um, if there's no other questions, I'd like to thank Again, Megan and Karen, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having us.